so that it became more interesting. Um, unskilled workers were advised to train for future jobs as demand will exceed supply. Um, oh, there was a rapid increase in the number and use of phones. There were 86,700 telephones in the Westminster District, which include Carroll, Cecil, Frederick, and Harford counties. The peak for the state at the end of 1962 was 1,425,000 phones. So I, can't, I have no idea what it is today. Um, Oyster and the Turkey Roast at Gerard and Gun Club was $3.50. Oh <laughs> and the consolidated school plan was under attack. There were, in every issue after this, it became more um, articles about the consoli you know, consolidating Mount Airy and Sykesville and making South Carroll. And it mentions President PTA, PTA President Gene Colburn, um, the Council Pres President Vernon Simpson, um, and there were other members that more that I'll get those more later. Then I went to February, and one of the big articles was the annexation of Ridgeville to Mount Airy proposed the petition is being circulated. So that must have started in 1963. Anybody remember any about that? I don't. James? I'm quite confident Dad started with that. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, we lived, we lived on uh, Main Main Street extended mm -hmm. on the south end, um, where the Ryan Farm did or was, and then it became who else's farm? I forget who lived there. But anyway, we knew it as the Ryan Farm, and Dad built a little house there after the war which we rented to locals, uh, uh, Betty Barn and George, and uh, uh, well, you guys family. rented it? Yeah, Barbara's family rented it, and uh, yeah. upstairs, and, the, and uh, Virginia Wilburn and her husband, uh, I think it was Pope at the time. Probably. They, they lived upstairs. Uh, and then eventually, we, we regained the upstairs, but uh, was that the little white house that mm -hmm. I was in? Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. And you read it up in there. We did, and I remember sitting at the window one Christmas Eve waiting for Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been four o'clock and he never showed up. It's a big man. So anyway, as time went on, the well went dry. Now, Barbara, you lived across the street. I don't remember whether you had a water problem or not. No, we didn't. We had no water. We, we probably, I don't know how big that lot was, maybe a third of an acre. Well, mm -hmm. It could have been a half, but I doubt it. There was no water, and Dad drilled nine wells on that property. Oh um, and back in those days, the, the well drillers were the pounder type. Uh, they would pound down and pump water down and uh, make a heck of a mess all over the place. And if we had water witches. But they, they used every technology they could think of on that property to find water, and they were all dry. And the ninth well, they brought in new technology, which was a uh, trail light. It had like a drill bit of water, and they went down 250 feet, wow. and they hit some water. So until we got water, we uh, my grandfather was a farmer, and we had two or three of those big milk cans set about this high with the metal lid on top. Mm -hmm. And we would take it down to plane number four where the where the spring was, mm -hmm. not far from Myers Liquid Fertilizer, and fill these cans up, and that's what we used for water. Well, Dad had enough of that, and the town, I think at that time, had had their own water system, I guess. I don't, I don't know, I don't know the details, but I assume they did. So, uh, he started a petition to annex Ridgeville all the way out, I guess, the Ryan Farm as well, in, into the town. I don't really know where the property line was, but I know it included the Little White House. Um, and so it was a big deal. Dad had never done anything like that before. And um, it, there was a lot of excitement, kind of like what still goes on, you know? <laughs> And uh, the big antagonist to, to Dad, and these guys were friends. 
I mean, the, everybody was local, and it never got nasty or bitter. Was uh, Pierce Ballas? Oh. Uh, <laughs> so where's Pete? You know, he, yeah. he, he was coming tonight. Huh? He oh, was coming tonight. He said as a surprise guest, but he had something else. It's came too up. bad he's not here. Uh, <laughs> but um, and, and <coughs> Pierce and Dad were friends, so there was no. But they were on opposite sides of this one, and eventually the the council did annex to Bridgeville, obviously. Yeah, it, but it seemed to me it got complicated. I don't know whether he had to have a second petition I or think it got did. voted I, down once. I think it was. If yeah. I remember correctly, they had to go in there a second time. Yeah, huh. he didn't give. He wasn't giving up. I mean, it was crazy. We didn't have water out there. Yeah. So, That's why we were in the country. Yeah, yeah, but we're not in the country. On the Okay. Um, oh, this was in the locals. Claude Hawkins. I don't. This may know who Claude Hawkins was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Darlene's dad. Yeah. Oh. Okay. What's okay. the first name? Claude. Yeah. Claude. Mm -hmm. Claude. Just returned from a chinchilla show. <laughs> of the eastern branch of the National Chinchilla Breeders of America in Towson, there were 399 animals shown. He got a second place, a fourth place, and three honorable mentions. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, and there was a public hearing set to give consideration to a Damascus, to Damascus rezoning for a shopping center way back then. So I guess that's the one Behind the the only one, the, the, only one. <laughs> the basic one of it, yeah. Before that, the door. Then there was a big picture of Hanford Moxley, and he was sort of sitting, some strange face, but his picture appeared in a five-part series on heart research, distributed by Newhouse National News Service, which serviced fourteen newspapers and had a circulation of five million readers. First articles dealt with emotional stress. Oh, I guess they see he must have had heart trouble in that. He worked for NIH, so I guess he found mm -hmm. a you know, study that way. The appeal board gives the okay for the swimming pool. Oh, and then uh, here and there there was a article on tonic. Two or three on here, so. Um, Oops, upside down. <laughs> Need a con tonic? John Wesley's prescription for good health. Observe exactness in your manner of living. Use a plain diet. Go to bed early. Above all, add the old unfashionable, unfashionable medicine prayer. Be as clean and sweet as possible in your house, clothes, and furniture. Water is the wholesome most, wholesome most of all drinks, quickens the appetite, and strengthens, strengthens the digestive system. Um, spiritual, spiritual, spirituous liquors, that's a hard one, are a certain, though slow, poison. Exercise is necessary to health and long life. Walking is the best exercise. All violent and sudden passions dispose you to acute diseases. The love of God prevents all bodily disorders. The passions introduced by keeping the passions themselves within due bounds. Huh. So that's your... <laughs> here and there, the here and there was a column on about halfway through the paper, down on one side all the time, and had a lot of different things. Okay, the National Symphony was in Westminster. The Frederick Orchestra was playing in Frederick. Um, and they sometimes put the proceedings from the Orphan's Court, but then there was an article that that might be an invasion of privacy. So I think they stopped that. Um, oh, here's an interesting one. 60 years ago, evidence against cigarette smoking is mounting. There's a direct link between damaged lungs and heart on one side and cigarette smoking on the other. Huh. Lung tissues changed by 
Smoking can lead to emphysema, respiratory diseases, and cancer. Yeah, they so we knew that 60 yeah, years no, ago. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> then there was a search launched for Outstanding Mother of 1963. <laughs> and the standards, you had to be a successful mother as evidenced by character and achievement of her individual children. Hmm. Be active member of a religious body. Embody traits of courage, cheerfulness, patience, affection, kindness, understanding, and a good homemaking ability. Also, exemplify in her life and conduct the percepts of the golden rule. She should have a sense of responsibility in civic affairs and be active in service for public benefit. She should be qualified to represent the mother of America in all responsibilities attached to a national mother role. Who got it? That's a nice one. Just, that was just the qualifications they were searching for. Oh, we haven't got to it yet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the and then, and lots of times they're just little tidbits at the bottom of pages. An 88 year old refused parole for the eighth time. Prison has given him a home and he's too old to leave. Oh, well. oh he wanted to stay. <laughs> Oh, my. Yeah. Name on that? <laughs> no, it's just an idiot. Don't you know him? <laughs> um, he had a home. He got food and a you know, place to stay, but he moved. Um, Attorney General Robert Kennedy hiked 50 miles along the CNO Canal from Washington to a point north of Frederick. And it said at, at Modder Avenue, and the Frederick Freeway, I guess that was 15, uh, the Frederick Freeway, where he was picked up by a Jeep and driven to Camp David. Wow. Meanwhile, while he was doing that, Ethel and the seven kids were enjoying skiing in Braddock Heights and ice skating in Frederick. Mm -hmm. So, fire destroys the frame building at the Boy Scout Winding Trail Camp. Were you a Boy Scout? Do you remember yes, that? Yes, I was. I was uh... I was part of the cleanup crew to clean up. Oh, the okay. yeah. we, um, uh, it took uh, two or three nights after the after the fire investigators finished with it, we cleaned it all off, used the same foundation, and in about a month's time, rebuilt the cabin. It said it was rebuilt later, but it said it was tied into. A, they thought it was tied into a break in at the Ride and Gun Club across that's, the street. That's what they they thought, and this guy he left tracks through the snow down to that building. And that's how they figured it caught fire. They actually saw apparently tracks coming through the woods to the building and tracks coming out of the building back out. So they assumed that that's, that's how it's Did they ever it. catch anybody? Do you know? That's my knowledge. Huh. Oh. Have you ever heard that the um, old bowling alley down by the bank, the lanes were used for the flooring at the scout camp? Mm -hmm. Mary Hushauer said something to me about that. Mary's shaking her head. Yeah, that's what we were told by, um, oh, what, uh, he passed away. Um, so his, or his last name started with, a, I thought, an O, and he, he lived right on that house on the corner of Lookout and um, Park. Oh, uh, Tom Ogle. Ogle, that's right, Ogle, yeah, yeah, that's who... That's possible because Tom was big in the Scouts at that time. So mm -hmm. he may have good He's a forever Boy Scout. He and Charles Giddell. Yeah. And Charles was on the Scout around. Right? Yeah. Oh, Tom was trying. Yeah. But it was rebuilt, yeah. Then the junior high school presented two one act operettas. The seventh grade was called Molly Be Jolly. Had Connie Glenn, who's Connie Bly, Gerald Mundy, Larry Cullison, <laughs> Wayne Logue, and Debbie Monkley. The eighth grade presented Dream Ranch. Frank Durstball, Terry Baker, <laughs> Sally Myers, <laughs> Francis Wilder, and was supported by, I guess they were directors of Polly Myers and Edwin Wiles. Do you remember your sisters in that? Or <laughs> I was in college. I was oh, you're not. <laughs> you didn't for the apparatus? <laughs> Oh, then there was a baby shower from Mrs. Albert Shell. 
Centerpiece of the table was a three-tier cake, attractively decorated in pink and blue, made by Susan Baller. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you were crafty way back then. I did, well, I did cakes way back then. Yeah. Did you remember that one? Or? Three tiers, that's pretty good. That's a class you could have at your B and B. Cake decorating. Well, that's another discussion. Oh. <laughs> okay. Then we're into March of 1963, and they were having youngsters' photos to be featured in the newspaper. This was a series called. Citizens of Tomorrow, and they were going to have you bring out your kids and have their picture taken, and then they appear various times in the Community Reporter. Um, there was a oh, there was a opportunity to catch a likeness of your child at the present stage for the pleasure you will get out of it in the future. There was no <laughs> charge. I don't know whatever happened with that. I've, when you look through, have you seen many <coughs> pictures of kids in the other one? There were many, were there? many times through. Yes, because yeah. I remember seeing the Lomans was Mike and, in there. Yeah, Mike was in there. All yeah. the Lomans were oh. in there. Yeah. Oh. So it did. Was yes, something it, that happened? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I must not have been in it. Well, I was older there. Well, I was. We were what sophomores in high school in '63. <coughs> oh, there's the Boy Scout camp. Is that okay? Oh, the Druid Theater was presenting West Side Story. Um. This one I don't think you could put in today. Uh, overweight Airman First Class Edward McGuire, 34, has until mid-May to shed 32 pounds. <laughs> in the paper. Oh. Did they put that in the paper? Yeah. Wow. Talk about invasion of privacy. He couldn't get a sandwich anywhere. <laughs> We miss our newspaper, right? I know. Let's <laughs> see all this fun stuff we have. Um, the champion Mount Airy High School Bulldogs men's team won the top spot in Carroll County basketball for two straight years. They and they said between seven and eight, seven hundred and eight hundred people filled the gym. They had to stop selling tickets. And they also won the district championship, but failed to make the state fire. Please around 1942. I think we lost them. Didn't we usually lose to Foolsville or somebody with those bigger schools? Every year they would take school bus loads of manor into the Foolsville, and every year we get cream out. <laughs> oh, well. well, we got that far. We were one of the counties, but that was a good year. We had one of the yeah. players. Okay, the Mount Airy 4-H girls planning activities. The president was Sharon Warfield. They met at the home of Linda Brown. Devotions by Marilyn Baker. They had 16 members. Secretary was Susan Baller. Treasurer was Karen White. They donated $25 to Carroll County General Hospital. $5 to Mount Airy Senior High Dance Band. And $5 to the Mount Airy Volunteer Fire Company. So that's from your fundraisers you did, or how? <laughs> well, you're the secretary. How many years ago this was? <laughs> Sixty. Sixty. Gave me no warning. I look it up. <laughs> um, they had a spring and summer fashion show. Um, the chairman was your sister, Cindy Baller. The, the decorator was Karen White. Sound was Sally Myers. Refreshments were Sharon Norwood. Okay, then they had a mother and daughter banquet. Chairman was Gloria Clower. Invitations was Sally Myers. Um, the food was Tina Baller, Barbara White, Carolyn Colbert, and Marilyn Baker. Um, the window display committee, this was interesting because they later did something else. Judy Windsor, Sally Myers, Barbara White, and Sharon Norwood. And they later, won, so it comes up in another article that they won uh, the over the county prize for their display in the window. 
Okay, Ridge Swimming Club membership drive underway and prospective members to view film on, spool, on the pool construction. And the miniature exhibit was in the window of the Griffith Consumers, which was the division of Food and Grimes. Ms. Helen Whitty becomes new editor of the Reporter and succeeds Evelyn Moxley. I don't think I remembered Evelyn was a... Yeah, I remember her. Yeah. She was. Yeah. Um, Mannery Fireman called out about 3.30 Wednesday afternoon to extinguish a fire on a, no, it wasn't in the afternoon. Well, yeah, exploded in the trailer home of Carl Anderson of Parsville. But it said there was no damage. Well, how can something explode? And, <laughs> it did? Yeah, he died of the fire. Well, the article didn't have that. He died in fire in the trailer. Oh my God! I don't know who's that fire, but it was he died in fire in the trailer. One of the first fire fatalities in this area. Really? Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Um, okay. Then in one of the Senate cloakroom articles, stated that a ninety-eight billion dollar proposed budget contained a lot of fat that could be cut out with, without damage to the county. Good luck today and every